In this tutorial, I'm going to go over Section 3 of the Pilot's Operating Handbook, which contains emergency procedures. What we're going to find is that there's going to be quite a few itemized lists. However, I will not go over these lists point by point. Instead, I will demonstrate the emergency procedures in a future tutorial, either in the aircraft or in a flight simulation environment like Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's start off by looking at the uh, table of contents, which, like always, comes first and tells us everything to be expected. Here we've got a blank page, which should say, this page intentionally left blank. Here we've got the introduction, and it says, Section 3 provides checklist and amplified procedures for coping with emergencies that may occur. Emergencies caused by airplane or engine malfunctions are extremely rare if proper pre-flight inspections and maintenance are practiced. In route weather emergencies can be minimized or even eliminated by careful flight planning and good judgment when unexpected weather is encountered. However, should an emergency arise, the basic guidelines described in this section should be considered and applied as necessary to correct the problem. In any emergency situation, the most important task is continued control of the airplane and maneuver to execute a successful landing. Emergency procedures associated with optional or supplemental equipment are found in Section 9, Supplements. Here we can see airspeeds for emergency operations. We can see the maximum glide speed, which is 68 knots, precautionary landing with engine power speed, landing without engine power, flaps up and full flaps. Here we can see emergency procedures, and it says Procedures in the Emergency Procedure Checklist portion of this section are shown in boldface. Type are immediate actions which should be committed to memory. And here we can see in the case of engine failure during takeoff roll, it says throttle control to idle, brakes apply. And that one should be fairly obvious. And then here we have engine failure immediately after takeoff, where it says 70 knots flaps up, 65 knots if the flaps are anywhere between 10 degrees and full. Here we've got engine failures. Some interesting notes. If the propeller is windmilling, engine will restart automatically within a few seconds. If the propeller stops, which means that you're basically pitched up and the propeller slows down and the windmilling is not sufficient to keep it moving, turn the magneto switch to start, advance the throttle slowly from idle, and lean the mixture from full rich as required to obtain smooth operation. And here is another note that says, if the indicated fuel flow immediately drops to zero, a sign of failure of the engine driven fuel pump, return the fuel pump switch to the on position. Here we can see forced landings, precautionary landings with engine power, forced landings ditching, fires during start on the ground, and this can be particularly dangerous because if it goes unchecked, a fire during start on the ground can spread quickly and burn the airplane to the ground. Here we have engine fires in flight, a very dangerous situation electrical fires in flight, also very dangerous. And here we can see a warning. It says that after the fire extinguisher has been used, make sure that the fire ex is extinguished before exterior air is used to remove smoke from the cabin because if you open the window and reintroduce oxygen, that's one of the main things you need for combustion. Here we've got more for electrical fire in flight, cabin fires, here we've got a note that says, perform a slip to keep flames away from the fuel tank and cabin. 
Land as soon as possible using flaps only as required for final approach and touchdown. That's an interesting little note. Here we have icing. And remember, we saw in section one and two that known, flicing, known flying into icing conditions is prohibited. Here we've got information on static source blockage, excessive fuel vapor, abnormal landings, so landing with a flat main tire, with a flat nose tire, electrical power supply system malfunctions, Here we've got more electrical power uh, malfunctions. High voltage enunciator comes on or main battery amps more than 40. Low voltage enunciator. Here we have low voltage enunciator remains on. Here we have air data system failure. And the air data system is going to be on the more modern aircraft where you have electronic EFSs like the Garmin G1000, which replaces your old analog instruments. Here we have the attitude and heading reference system, or AHARS. We have autopilot or electric trim failure. Display cooling advisory. Vacuum system failure. And before we move on, the thing to note is that we've got a lot more potential modes of failure because the newer Cessnas are running these electronic flight uh, displays. So you need to resharpen the tool of knowledge, so to speak, if you're accustomed to flying old analog gauges. Uh, you really want to know these new amplified procedures because there's new potential failure modes that were not possible before in your older aircraft. Here we have high carbon monoxide levels. We've got amplified emergency procedures for engine failure, maximum glide, and it tells us that the best glide speed is 68 knots indicated airspeed. This is actually a I want to say kind of a poor man's best guess at the best glide speed. If you transition into flying gliders, you'll realize that there isn't a single best glide speed, but there's a whole range of speeds that depend on various conditions like the winds, the amount of lift, and the amount of sink. So what this is assuming is that it's the best glide speed for a given weight and still air. And if you work out the numbers, you'll find that the glide, based on this chart, is from 12,000 feet, you have about 18 miles. That's only glide ratio of about 9 to 1. It's pretty bad for the Cessna 172. Here we have forced landings. Landings without elevator control, you can do it. In fact, you can practice it, and I have. It's a lot of fun. Get your instructor to show you how. Fires. Operations in clouds. Here we have emergency descents through clouds, inadvertent flight into icing conditions, static source blockage, spins, spark plug fouling, magneto malfunction, idle power engine roughness, engine driven pump failure, excessive fuel vapor, low oil pressure. Here we have excessive rate of charge, insufficient rate of charge, insufficient rate of charge again, carbon monoxide, damage to the windshield, a blank page, and then we go on to section four which is normal procedures. So you can see that section three is pretty simple but there's a lot of information that you want to try to commit to memory. Granted if you don't fly very often it will be hard to retain and remember all this so you really want to go back and constantly reread this section and refresh yourself on all these procedures if it's been a while since you've flown. And that's all there is to it, and it's really that simple.